Welcome to this video on how to install and configure Netscaler Console. The first thing we have to do is download the Netscaler Console itself by going to the Citrix Downloads website. On the Downloads page, select the Netscaler Console. This will bring up a list of the ADM releases that we need to download. For this one, we will download the latest version, which is 14.1 build 43.50. We select the ESXi version and click download file, uh, accept the license agreement, and the file now comes down. Now that the file is downloaded, we are able to extract the contents of the zip file. The zip file contains the OVF and the OVA files that we all, that we all import into VMware. So just uh, click on to extract them and, the, and all the files appear in an extracted folder. Yeah, as you can see, all four files are there. So now we're going to import them into vSphere to create our Netscale console virtual appliance. So we click to deploy the OVF and select the local file, upload files, and then we select our OVA file. Click on the OVVL file and click on open. Click next. Yep, give the uh, virtual appliance a name. Once the name's been applied to the machine, just click next. Yep, that's done. And we just, just select our compute resource within VMware ESXi. Compatibility checks all passed on here and just click next again. The machine has now been imported, so we need to select the uh, storage repository. For this, I'll select FIM provisions, as it will only be about 499 meg rather than 120 gig. Choose the uh, network, and then we just got the summary page and click finish. Now that the Netscale console appliances are imported into VMware, we need to change a NIC as it will come set as an E1000, which can cause problems. So we'll change the adapter to a BMX Net 5. So what we need to do is remove it from the virtual appliance, then add a new device and select network adapter. Then drop down the network adapter and change it from E1000 to VMX Net 3. And just click on OK to finish that. Once that's happy with the settings in there. Yep, they all look good. Click OK. What we will do now is assign an IP address to the Netscaler console virtual appliance. In vSphere, just click on Power and select Power On. Launch the web console, and we'll now see that the Netscaler is booting. It'll just take a minute or so to boot. We're now at the initial network configuration page. So if we select option one and give the Netscale console a host name, just enter the host name and then press enter. Okay, select option two to give an IP address. 
So enter the IP address and then just press enter. Then we choose option three to enter the net mask. Ours is 24 bit, so we enter 255.255.255.0 and press enter. Then we add the gateway IP by choosing option four. Yeah, we just add one of our DNS servers. We can only add the one in here at the moment. So choose option five to enter our DNS IP address. Press enter on that one. And then option seven to save and quit. And that will save all of our changes. Okay, so that's our changes saved on there. And now our IP address is committed. And it'll just take a few minutes for that to apply and we can access the GUI. So, yep, we've now got access to the GUI. Just enter our username and password, which is which are nsroot and nsroot. We will be prompted to change the password on first login. So, just click sign in there, re enter nsroot and nsroot as a username and password again, and then pop our own password into the new password and confirm new password boxes, then click on submit. There we go, all done, and now we're into the Netscaler console. We need to set up a time source, so we're going to add an NTP server. So if we go into administration, and then NTP servers, so, yep, we'll click on add, and add our IP address of our NTP server which is one of our domain controllers. Once we've added that in, just click on create. We're prompted with a warning about starting the NTP synchronization service once we've done that. Okay, yes, there's the warning, click on yes. Okay, if we uh, highlight our service and then click on NTP synchronization, we tick the box to enable NTP synchronization, click OK, and we'll be prompted to reboot our Netscape console so that the settings take effect once it's rebooted. We now need to set the system configuration options on the Netscape console. So under system configurations, we go to system and time zone. Uh, we will make sure that we can access this console securely. So we click on the secure access only box and click save. Check the time zone, UTC is fine with me. If we go back to the basic settings again, uh, we can set a, a session timeout. So if we tick the enable session timeout box, we can then change that session timeout down to five second, five minutes from 15 minutes, and then click save, and that applies those changes. The next thing we need to do is disable TLS version 1.1. The Netscaler console, as default, comes with TLS version 1.1 enabled. So we need to go into the settings and disable TLS version 1.1. So if we go into protocol settings, untick the box for TLS version 1.1, needs a reboot, so we just click yes, and it will restart the Netscaler console and remove that protocol. Should just take a couple of minutes to reboot. We will now enable system notifications. So any notification for the system will alert us via email. You can choose the notifications you wish to re receive. I've got everything selected at the moment, and I'm just going to create a, a 
email server and then a distribution list for alerts to be sent to. So the first thing is to create the email server. You send to your SMTP name for your server or, your, or the IP address of your SMTP server and the port. Once you've done that, just click on create. Yep, so click create. We just give, give you a dis distribution name a list. Then we enter, we've got the SMT box below and then just put the to and from addresses in there. We can then give it a test and there it is, all done. We can configure automated backups of the actual Netscale console and the Netscale VPX appliances as well. So what we do is go into the, the backup section and choose the amount of backups that we require. You can also send them to an external server as well if you wanted a, another copy of them. And also on the instances, we can choose the amount of instances we want and how often we are going to uh, run those backups. For this one, I've chosen 15 instances to run every two days. So we've got a month's worth of backups. Further event notification and digest configuration can be set. So our options are set here where we just set our email configuration and notifications. And we can do an event digest. It sends us a report every morning. So if we untick the disable event digest box, we can have a daily report sent to us. So I'm just going to choose a daily report here to be sent to us at 6 a.m. each day. That's our notification saved, and we should re receive those ports every morning now. Next thing we're going to do is configure flex licensing. So for flex licensing, we need to choose a flex licensing option, and then go back to the license management section on here and download and download our licenses from Citrix. So I'm, first of all, I'm downloading the Flex Platinum Bandwidth Licenses, which anyone who has the UHMC new licensing scheme will be uh, able to access and use on their Netscaler. So grab the uh, MAC address of the Netscaler console, go back to my licenses and add the MAC address there and create my license file. And then click yes to create the license file and then download it afterwards. Now that's downloaded, I can import that file into here, the license file, so by clicking Browse, and then select the license file. Yeah, click Open, and now it's, inst it's installed on here. With a quick finish, it will now apply that license to the Netscaler console. If we go into the flex licensing section, it will show us that we now have one terabyte of flex bandwidth. So we need to add the VPX software instances as well, because we're going to be using Netscaler VPX appliances. So we do the same thing again. We allocate the licenses and then just add the MAC address, which gives us 999 Netscaler VPX software instances. So it's going to generate the license file and then download it. Then once again, import it in like we did before into the console. Let it run. Go to the flex licensing again. And once it's come in, the flex licensing section should show that we have 999 Netscaler VPX appliances available. I'll now go through the process of adding a Netscaler instance to the Netscaler console. So what we need to do is click on the Add button, give the IP address of a Netscaler VPX that we have, and 
we'll need to set a, a profile with the Netscaler uh, NS root and password in there. So we create the profile, we set, give it a profile a name, pop the username in afterwards. For this case, we'll just use NS root. Give it a password. Uh, we can set the SNMP options here. Just call it public and then go a privileged account, put the most secure authentication on there and just give passwords for the authentication password and privacy passwords. Once we've done them, we just click on create and that's all complete. And we should be able to connect to our Netscaler and add it in as an instance on the Netscaler console. So just click OK now. There we go, it just runs through and it should just add the Netscaler instance in, which it has done. So we've got, I've got two instances in there. We will now enable analytics on our Citrix gateway, as we have a gateway running for Citrix virtual apps and desktops. So we just configure analytics on the Netscaler instance, enable analytics and choose HDX Insight and click save and that applies the analytics to that, that gateway server that we've chosen. For the analytics to work properly and give us back uh, correct information, we just need to choose a few settings on the Netscaler. So if we go to system, click on the settings, click on configure mode, we just need to check that Uf, ULL for FD is enabled, which it is. Then into global system settings, we just need to add the ICA ports 1494 and 2598 into the into here, and then save that. And then we go to change HTTP parameters as well. And then the HTTP ports, we add in 80 and 443. Then we just need to check that our AppFlow connector is working correctly. As you can see, it shows us down. This is because the port wasn't open between the Netscaler and the Netscaler console. I've changed that and now it shows us up. Thank you very much for watching and please do like and subscribe.